Uh, hey everyone, so a while ago I made this scene, it was a decent, a decent while ago, but um, pretty much I thought I might just do a raw breakdown of how I made it and stuff. Um, this isn't going to be edited and um, made into a pretty video like my other stuff, but I thought it might still be useful because then it's easier for me to post and get these videos out to just um, to just cover it in one raw breakdown. So yeah, this is pretty much it. Um, this is probably one of my more photorealistic scenes that I've made in the past of um, my renders. Um, obviously for now I've switched over to animations and stuff, but in terms of images and stuff, this is probably one of my better ones when it comes to photorealism. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of what the file looks like and it's super messy, so don't mind that. Anyway, but yeah, so I'm going to be kind of going through it on how I made it. Um, and yeah, so this is kind of what it looks like scene view. Obviously there's, it's really messy, so there's a lot of stuff just lying around, um, which isn't necessary. But a lot of the lighting here, and I think all of it from memory, is pretty much just the HDRI, apart from these um, octane lights over here. But I don't think they're doing much from memory. So if we just launch the render, yeah, so pretty much this is what it looks like, just raw um, from the from Octane itself without any post-processing and stuff. Um, for color grading, I did end up doing an EXR workflow and then I graded it in After Effects, but I might cover that another day. Um, anyway, so this is what the camera looks like. For the camera settings, it is carrying a decent amount in the scene, I think. So I just go to the camera that is controlling it. Yeah, so I shot at 35mm, 36mm, it's close enough. And a big part of the lighting, I think, is the bloom for this scene especially. So, as you can see, that adds a lot of like the flares and stuff and the light kind of peeling over the sides of the, the buildings. It's pretty subtle, but it does, in my opinion, add a decent amount to the render. Um, also, I have my motion blur I didn't need because it's just a static scene. I also have depth of field on. So just a decently low aperture. I'm personally not a fan of how Octane handles aperture of the sliders and stuff, but um, I've switched to V-Ray and Houdini for now anyways. But yeah. So I've also changed aperture rotation and aspect ratio to three. This is actually pretty high. It should be at two. I don't know why it's at three. Um, pretty much what this does is at one, it would be a normal spherical lens. And then at two, it makes it anamorphic and anamorphic lenses have a really nice look to them, which is why I usually have it at 2 or 1.66 or 1.33, which are the pretty standard uh, anamorphic lens sizes. So yeah, pretty basic for the camera. If we just jump out of the camera here, you can see how it's sort of constructed. So as far as I remember, the whole lighting is actually driven from this HDRI here, or the dome light. Um, yeah, so I just have the power low at like 0 0.3. I already made a tutorial about this, so you guys can look back at that and I go into it in more depth. But for this, it's pretty much just the, the HDRI driving the lighting. And I also have, uh, these are just different HDRI variations. I also have these, but I'm not sure. I don't think they're turned on or anything. The only one that's turned on is this one, which is super low brightness but it can I've made it so the bloom picks it up and it can flare but it doesn't actually really add much lighting to the scene it's more just the, the highlight point um, yeah also the scene is super messy but also I have a volume going over the whole scene so if we just turn this off you can see it's super subtle um, but it does add a little bit when I turn it on just scatters the, the light a bit nicer Generally for scenes or all my scenes, even like ones like this, we don't need a lot of volume. I pretty much always use it just because it scatters light a bit nicer than if you wouldn't have it on and it looks better. Um, but yeah, I pretty much always do that. Um, yeah, so for the texturing of the bike, this bike is actually from Sketchfab, I believe. I don't know, it was a long time ago, but um, I redid a lot of the textures in Substance Painter. I was going to break down the substance file, but I don't quite have it at the moment. But usually when I redo um, a lot of textures and substance painter like this, I just end up adding like cleaning it up and then adding dirt and stuff and edge wear, which you might be able to see here. So I have some edge wear here and just like grunge and metal wear. Um, this isn't the best substance job I've done, but um, it works for this frame. 
So yeah, all of these things I modeled in Maya, which I then brought over. So this is just pretty basic subdiv modeling. Um, and then I believe, oh, this one might've been on UV unwrapped, but usually nowadays when I do modeling and stuff like this, I'm pretty lazy. So I just use a triplaner um, when I can and then put that over the whole model and scale it to what it needs to be. These assets over here are all Quixel assets um, that I found, I think. Maybe a couple of these are from Sketchfab as well. Um, just some sort of assets that fit in the environment. And yeah, these pipes and stuff, I think were ones that I also modeled. They were part of this um, sort of garage thing that I made. And then also sort of kept bashed with Quixel models. So it's usually what I do for a lot of my scenes. Sometimes I model everything. Sometimes I adjust models. Uh, sometimes I do a mix of both where I just use, like in this scene, Quixel models and um, and my own. So for the concrete, if I can just find the material, I'll go into sort of how I made this. I believe this one was pretty simple. Yeah. So this is one of my, this is an older scene. I do texturing a bit different now. I add a lot more breakup so it looks a bit better, but um, I can show that off in a newer scene I've made, maybe in a different video. But for this, pretty basic, I just have um, the albedo, um, and then I've color corrected it, corrected it to be a bit less bright. And the reason I do that a lot of the time is because it ends up showing off more reflections if your materials are darker or they're just more visible. Um, but you also do have to, so I've mixed in the concrete roughness map I think with a grunge map and I've sort of mixed those together. Gradients are really useful, although it's not actually doing anything here, but pretty much if you're, if you just have a standard map and you run it through a gradient and then you put up the blacks um, and blend, it's called color amp, then um, it will make your scene, it'll bring out the darker parts more, um, which will make it seem uh, the, the texture more reflective, which is a really nice trick. Um, I've just mixed this in. This is a standard lerp mix, uh, 0.3. So pretty basic this i believe is just bump I'm surprised i didn't actually use a normal here but um the scene is pretty old usually i use normals nowadays but this worked for now and i did actually add some displacement which is surprising um probably not necessary especially for a texture this flat but this is before i really um discovered the the power of normal maps so yeah Nowadays, I would probably not use displacement, just use the normal map, adjust that, and you'd get the same effect, I think, um, with just uh, uh, less of a performance cost. So yeah, pretty much that's it for texturing. Obviously, the Akira bike um, has a lot of textures running through it, but um, they will just be standard PBR because I did all the texturing and substance and exported it through. Um, what else? So for the flag... I believe I simulated this in Blender and then I brought it over as a static thing and then I just projected this texture or just added this texture on it just has the basics just a grunge map gradient going through it I made it a bit less rough um, image I found on Google and then a bump map um, to just like break it up a little bit which to be honest isn't really doing much here but I know it is see those little like sort of breakups um, that's all the bump map doing that and it's a subtle effect but um, it does actually change how the light sort of interacts with it which is important a lot of the time in my scenes now it's pretty rare for the HDR to drive the whole lighting because it's pretty situational it worked for this scene but if it doesn't work I usually start with an HDR and then if that isn't enough um, to and it just feels the GI I usually add like a in V rate it's called the directional light um, I can probably actually show you here. So I have like a... Oh, wait, this is actually an incomplete scene. Never mind. But um, I have a directional light and an HDRI, and I sort of just match those up. So the directional light provides all the shadows, and the HDRI will provide all the GI and sort of the real-world colors that you see. Um, and that's sort of the strategy I've been doing for pretty much all my scenes, to be honest. Um, and it's been working pretty well. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'll probably make a couple more of these raw breakdown videos as they're probably more useful to you guys um, and they're easier to make for me rather than editing the full thing. So yeah, thanks for watching.